I'm going to go ahead and get us started here. We do have a report out from closed session. This is 5.1. Uh, in closed session, the Board of Trustees, by a unanimous vote, authorized Superintendent President or his designee to give notice to the Assistant Director, Child Development Center Acting Director, Child Development Center is required by the Employment Agreement and the Education Code that the district would release her from her administrative position effective June 30th, 2019. So that is our report out from closed session. And Amanda, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Thank you. 5-3, adoption of the agenda. Agenda is adopted. Moving to public comment. At this time, this is 6-1, public comment. At this time, the board will devote a total of up to 15 minutes for comments to the Board of Trustees regarding any subject not appearing as an agenda item for this meeting, but over which the board has jurisdiction. The public asked the board to place an item related to the business of the district on a future board agenda. No action or discussion will occur at this time on such items. Individuals will be limited to a five minute presentation. At this time, the board chair will pull those in attendance regarding their intent to speak on any item on the agenda. And I do have two comments here, one general and Raphael, yours is on 14.1. Uh, Dean Robert. Thank you, um, Trustee Iverson, Dr. Kraft, members of the board. On behalf of the math department, happy Pi Day. <laughs> Ron, we should have brought Pi. Um, since your last meeting, we lost a valuable member of the faculty, our part-time math instructor, Professor Domingo Soria, who passed away suddenly after suffering a heart attack. Uh, I first met Domingo when I had to explain to him that standing room only was just a figure of speech and that we couldn't really have students sitting in the aisles in his classroom, uh, no matter how popular he was. Uh, some time ago, he was introduced as a full-time temporary leave replacement, and he wrote the following document under the title of, I am a Spaniard. Uh, he wrote, I am a Spaniard born on a volcanic island called Tenerife uh, near the west coast of Africa, which belongs to the Canary Islands archipelago. My parents emigrated to South America when I was still a little boy, so I grew up in Venezuela. I've been a college professor of mathematics for more than 30 years at several four and two-year colleges in Venezuela, Spain, and the USA. I've had the fortune to teach at private and public colleges in different languages, in different countries, and to very diverse groups of students. Here in the States, I've had the privilege to teach at Colorado State University, Solano Community College, and Napa Valley College. In Spain, I taught at the Carlos III University of Madrid, and in Venezuela, I taught at the Simon Bolivar University and at the Metropolitan University of Caracas. I published 10 papers on statistics, numerical analysis and optimization, and still do research on my, quote, free time. He wrote, I'm really glad to teach at Napa Valley College because I've found an educational environment where everybody truly works towards student success. This is like a big family where everybody helps each other. In particular, I've seen the respect, interest, and understanding with which our Latino and Afro-American students are treated at Napa Valley College. Being a Latino professor myself, I greatly appreciate all these efforts made at NVC, and I'm really happy to be a part of this family. We've extended college sympathies to Domingo's family and his wife, Teresa. Uh, he will be greatly missed. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Bob. The board uh, sends its condolences to Domingo and his family. Um, moving on to uh, special report 7.1. This is an overview of the NVC athletics and physical education program. Looks like Dean Harris and Jerry are going to be presenting on this one. Yeah. yeah. 
Good evening, board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, and President Kraft, uh, guests. Uh, at your last meeting, uh, Trustees Dodd and uh, Iverson requested uh, uh, some overview and some information about uh, the PE and athletics programs, and, and uh, we're here tonight to provide that information for you. And we were asked to do a 20-minute presentation, but re in reality, this presentation could be two hours. And I don't want it, we're not going to do that, but um, <laughs> uh, to save everybody. But uh, I do want to um, interject, though, that I, we sent you a, we sent, I sent you a, a PowerPoint with some information and photos. But I really would hope, I can, we can provide bullet points, but I hope if you have some questions that we might be able to um, illuminate further for you, uh, we can go down that road. So um, again, my name's Robert Harris. I came here as the Associate Dean and Athletic Director six years ago. And uh, Jerry Dunlap, Athletic Director, Associate Dean for uh, Kinesiology, uh, Athletics, and Dance. <clears throat> I've been here now three years, and I previously was in Napa Valley Unified School District for 23 years. So as a quick overview, what we have, what we have here offering for you is a, a review of the kinesiology courses. Now, one of the things that's unique at the community college area is that physical education, athletics, and athletic, uh, physical education or kinesiology and athletics are intertwined. And they're intertwined because uh, the coaches are faculty members, typically either part-time or full-time. The courses in intercollegiate athletics carry credit, okay, so the students get credit for it. Um, and uh, and that's, a, that's the model statewide. And uh, there is, there is uh, overlap in many areas. And the facilities are also used um, as classrooms, not only an athletic field, but each of the facilities that you're going to see pictures and videos, or not videos of, they're classroom facilities, the same as a classroom like in, in the PAC or 1432 or in the 800 building. They're classrooms, okay? They're not the traditional sit down, board in front, classroom, but make no mistake, these are classrooms. So they need to be, uh, they need to be uh, uh, afforded, noted as such. This list of classes is what's offered in uh, kinesiology. Numbers 174, 178, and then 286 down, those are intercollegiate classes. They're identified in the community college uh, chancellor's office TOPS code as athletic related. So that's how they can break those out. But these are courses that are instructed by um, our faculty members here. Our program in PE and athletics, we have six full-time faculty members. One, uh, oh, sorry, six full-time faculty members, three of which are um, coaches. So they're full-time faculty. They are uh, experts in physical education, kinesiology, but they also coach. And then three others um, are dedicated to the, the academic program. Uh, we have Christy Kling uh, in the Adaptive Physical Education Program. Nadine Wade Gravitt, who most of us know, she's been here for many, many years. I think she's the longest tenured person on campus. And then um, uh, Kelly McCann, who is our dance specialist. And then our coaches are Bob Fresky, who's a tenured professor, Steve Ball, who's a tenured professor, and Michelle Hobbs, who's tenured. Okay. Um, so those are those. These courses are taught by them and approximately 30 other adjuncts, varying throughout throughout the year. <clears throat> this this slide here is just a brief illustration of what happens or what goes on in the program. Uh, in the fall, the bottom of fall of 18, 2018, there was 101 sections. Uh, 1,316 1,316 students took these courses. Total FTES 138. That's go through. But what that means is um, part of this program is that every student at Napa Valley College must have physical education courses as part of the general education program. So every student must have a, a, a activity course so to, to get their AA degree. Also our health, our health 106 class which is community health and dance 160 is one that uh, Kelly McCann has put through recently. Those are general education requirements that carry transferability to the CSU. That, that fit under, I think it's uh, C or E of the, the program. So what this is here to show is that um, these programs, there's dedicated faculty that work very hard to move these through. So um, we're not the biggest, we're not the biggest, we're not the smallest, um, but we do fill in uh, a need in the, in, the, in the academic curriculum. <laughs> okay, so these are the teams that we, that we host or sponsor here at the college, okay? <clears throat> Women's volleyball. Women's soccer was instituted in 2011. 
Okay, and it went through the process, it was, it was uh, added. Women's golf was added in 2005. Men's soccer has been here for quite some time, men's basketball. Women's basketball was added in 2000. Baseball, softball, and golf. Now, one of the other things that we have to work with on a daily basis is Title IX and make sure we, we provide opportunities for the underrepresented gender. And that opportunity is not only in participation, but coaching and, and the like. So those are constantly being monitored. Some programs that have been here in the past, and when I first got here, I heard a lot about, well, we should, do, we should add this again. We should get this moving again, okay? Um, but it's never quite so simple as just adding a team. Some teams that were here was gymnastics. In 1981, it was, re it was reduced. Now, gymnastics is one of the sports nationwide that unless you're, you're at UCLA or one of the major universities or at a local team, uh, gymnastics is one of those uh, sports that is very difficult to offer at a college. So, Liability is a huge issue. Football was dropped in 1982, okay? We should, if we wanted to have a nice humorous uh, anecdote, we could bring Ken Arnold back <laughs> and have Ken retell re re uh, his tales of the football team. Men's and women's swimming and diving was dropped, it was eliminated in 87, cross country in 87, women's tennis in 97, and men's tennis in 2000. Okay, so those are teams that have been here and have left, and most, most reason, the most common reason for teams not remaining is lack of interest or not enough people, to, not enough student interest to field teams. Another component is the fact that it's very difficult for some of the, for, we don't have competitors, okay? Now, for women's and men's tennis, we have, a, we have a, an agreement with, a Solano, with Solano Community College. They offer women's and men's tennis and they offer men's and women's diving and swimming. To reciprocate for that, we have uh, men's soccer. So, t so students from each school can go back and forth um, and play at that sport via a special agreement that Dr. Kraft signs every year. Okay, and it's almost like you're within the same district, but it, it has to be approved by the state agency, by the state governing body each year. So we have that. Um, I've been asked multiple times about adding men's and women's swimming. Um, I think Jerry, with the Solano team, is what? Fourteen. 14 people, and what we don't have for you is the number of people that could be going to nap if we had swimming. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say we don't have enough to, to, to field the men's and women's swimming team. Okay. Tennis, same thing. Eight. Eight. Okay. We have f marvelous tennis courts that were just, just resurfaced several years ago. And uh, Jerry Somerville for years had a very strong team. But we just, our, our, our tennis classes are, are dwindling. There's just, they don't fill, okay? Um, we also reciprocate with Solano for men's and women's golf. So we have a majority of their athletes actually come over here and compete on our athletic team. And it's one of our most competitive uh, intercollegiate athletic programs. And to, to look and um, we'd be happy to ask, answer questions later, but a potential team for us to add that would have um, uh, have a, a likelihood, a very strong likelihood to stick would be women's stand volleyball. And uh, one of our former coaches, uh, Kelly Van Winden in town, um, she has the Evolve Volleyball Club and she coaches at Napa High now and she's wanted to have one for a long time. And sand volleyball is actually catching on at the statewide level. So that would be one that would be a potential to add. However, you just don't get a couple people with volleyballs and go out to Kennedy Park and just start hitting the ball around. There are parameters that must be included. You have to have a certain number of courts and so there's a cost involved. And then also you have to have curriculum that has to be built because it's a credit bearing program. So, but that would be the most likely if we were to add it, and that would assist in our gender equity um, um, program. So some, some, some of our facilities, okay? Um, hopefully at some point, you've all had a chance to walk through and see, thing, see the, um, the, the facilities, but this is just a picture of our adapted physical education program in the 400 building. Okay, it's on the bottom level, and this, this room actually was sort of a pet project of Joanne Busenbark um, and Christy Kling, but Joanne, as a former trustee, was very involved in adaptive physical ed education. So in adaptive PE, we have five classes uh, each semester, sometimes six, depending on the availability of instructors, um, and they're filled, 20 students or more, as much as they can take. Um, and this, these classes are for people who have, may have... Uh, 
issues, they, they have developmental disabilities, cerebral palsy. Maybe it's a student who fell and broke their leg and they can't take, they're, they're not in a normal class, but they can come over here and do their physical activity and stay healthy while they're rehabilitating. Um, but this course is also, very, this class in this room is tied very closely to DSPNS. So, so those faculty and staff are very closely with DSPNS. So these, this, is, this is a program, uh, part of our program that really ties closely to the center of, of, of uh, the college mission. And DSPNS, this Disabled Student Programs and Services, sorry. Okay. <laughs> this is our, uh, our, our weight room that we run our PHYE 151 classes through. And the majority of our intercollegiate athletic programs use that as well. Um, it was developed, obviously, at the same time that uh, 400 building was developed. Um, one of our more impacted classes, if we do have an impacted class, would be our weight room. Traditionally, we fill those classes. Um, very good instruction occurs in there. And that weight room is utilized from about 8 o'clock a.m. and till about approximately 6.30 on certain nights. So it's utilized almost all day long. Now these, these, two, these two rooms are in the 400 building, and then on, I don't have a picture of the upper floor, which is the mat room, which is, well, yeah. Um, the mat room and the top, the top floor of the 400 building is used by Criminal Justice Training Center for their physical training. And um, uh, Damien, uh, our director, is very protective of that space, rightly so. So when the fires occurred, the mat room was used as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, a shelter the only two rooms that in our area that were not used in one way, shape, or form were the, the adapted physical education room and the weight room because those areas are attractive nuisances and they have issues with people in it. But all the other rooms in our, in our 400 and 600 building were used in one way, shape, or form to serve the evacuees. The gymnasium, okay, this is at the top of the 600 building. Hopefully you've all been here at one point in time. Um, this, this facility is rather nice inside. Uh, Matt, I don't know, when was this built or? Okay, this room, this, this gym has survived the fire. Okay, um, it served as a, as a refugee center. It's a, it's a wonderful facility. It's, it's used by uh, many people. Where's my? It's at the end, I think. Okay, so, but um, the people, People in the community use our facilities as well, just because it's a community college. So in, the, in the, the adaptive PE class, let me go back a bit, people, members of the community who have need and are, and are receive um, appropriate authorization, they can come in, um, take the adaptive PE class and receive specialized work from the faculty in the adaptive PE class. So there's a fair number of our students that are our students proper, if you will, as well as community folks who come in with a proper prescription and go through the normal process, take the class, who utilize the adaptive PE class. Um, the weight room is a, is a facility that we always are asked, can we all have an open gym? Let us, let us come in here and work out. Okay, well, there's a liability issue with that because it has to be supervised. And so that room isn't really, is, isn't really rented out or used by the community unless it is a supervised uh, uh, opportunity. The gym is home to our volleyball team, two basketball teams, Prolific Prep plays there. The Criminal Justice Training Center um, has their graduation in there. There's various basketball camps during the year. There's Evolve Volleyball. Uh, our indoor volleyball class, Optimus Basketball. The Gifts uh, for the Soldiers Overseas comes in. Mariachi Festival this weekend, which is gonna be wonderful. Um, those are just to name a few off the top of our head. We're looking at possibly Kevin Durant's fantasy camp potentially coming in if he decides or not des decides to stay with the Warriors next year. Um, so it's, it's utilized quite often. Uh, softball, United uh, under 10 is using it a little bit. And uh, it's utilized all day long once again. And what, so and what some people may know or may not know is that uh, in 2014 when Travis Stanley came to Napa, um, we were this close to having the Warriors um, here doing for a week doing some training and community service opportunities and then there was a little inconvenience called the earthquake that occurred because <laughs> they were they were due to be staying at the Weston so we almost had the Warriors in on campus and we were very much looking forward to that because there was going to be some upgrades and there was going to be some community service programs that the Warriors going to be put on and then that little inconvenience um, 
Now, this, this other slide right here is vas basketball and volleyball team rooms. These are simply two rooms that are used as dressing rooms for volleyball and basketball. Um, they're not really gender specific, um, but it's just they're there. Um, so here's the external use. The, these are the folks that use the gym. So, re so really what happens is our teams have the right of first refusal, and then it, goes op and then it can go out. And I can say that one of the best programs that I, since I've been here is the Optimist Basketball Group. That gentleman runs a heck of a program, but moral of the story is it's used. It's constantly in use. Um, and, and it's one of those areas that it's one of those areas that people want to use, and it's an attractive uh, facility, and it, it's the upkeep is is tremendous. It's hard, but it, it gets used, and there's a good reason for that. Down below in the 400 building is the dance room. Okay, now this room is actually divided into two rooms, and if you see on the right hand side, there's a divider there. And the other side of this room is the, is the other half of the room, but it's really a spin room, so it's a spinning class room. Uh, so that's pretty much what it's dedicated to. They can move the bikes out to the side and, and use it for other, other um, uh, opportunities, but typically it's a spin room, right? Um, so this, these are large open spaces that can often be used for uh, CPR courses, community dance courses. If you ever come around on a Saturday, sometimes you'll see people fencing, and it's like, well, <laughs> and um, there, and then other needs as appropriate. So this room during the uh, fire was, uh, was I think this room was an animal food storage, and the other side was, a, or vice versa, was was um, the animals where yes. the refugees brought their pets. So these rooms were utilized again, but this is uh, the room. This is basically the house of Kelly McCann. Women's soccer team room. This is on the bottom of 400. So this is a room that's dedicated for women's soccer, and with the help of Matt, Jerry, and the coach, uh, Randy Simmons, they made this a comfortable space for the students to come hang out. Um, we've, got, we've got paint and stuff, but it was um, something that Randy came in and wanted to do and create a space for the students. Um, our athletic training room. Uh, this is where our, our sports medicine athletic trainer uh, specialist is housed, as well as they provide treatment uh, for our student athletes. Etc. It's in the middle. It's right next to the equipment room. If you've been down, down to the floor across from the locker rooms, there's a, an equal and opposite women's uh, volleyball uh, soccer team room. There's a men's baseball soccer team room. Same thing, and this is sort of a part of a, re part, a repurposed part of an overall larger locker room. Um, criminal justice locker area. So there's a specific area in the locker room that's dedicated to the criminal justice training center. So when you're here on a weekend or during the days, you see them running and going in and out of the locker room. They're going to change their uniforms, but it's dedicated for them. Okay. Um, what I'm not showing you is a picture of the two locker rooms pr proper, and they have a hallway that goes out to the to the pool. Now the locker rooms is part of our, our facilities master plan a couple years ago when we were looking at possibly doing a bond and such. Spent time working with Matt. The locker room as, as it is currently configured is in the old days of a locker room, meaning lots of lockers, lots of showers, and just open space that, that nobody uses anymore. Um, like it, whether we like it or not, students don't come and shower and after games or practices, they hit the car and run. Our showers are most often used by the criminal justice folks, or it's also opportunity for homeless uh, showering, and also the swim groups that come in, they'll come in and shower. But right now, the square footage in the shower and locker room is way more than, than is necessary. And we, had met, we worked with Matt to sort of initiate some plans on repurposing it for maybe moving the athletic training center over there, things like that. But that's potential down the road. Our racquetball courts, there's four of them, okay? Really, the only use that the racquetball courts get anymore is the Napa Valley Racquet Club. Um, and Jerry, I think when Jerry was a, uh, you were an instructor here, I think. I was. He opened up at 5.30 for, for this group. In the morning. <laughs> um, and I think, Matt, I think they're the only people that formally use it. Most of the time, the racquetball courts are used by um, the tennis groups when it's raining the softball teams or baseball team for batting practice when they can't get on their field. And it's also used, they're also used um, for storage. Uh, we no longer offer racquetball courses because they just didn't fill. Six years ago, um, we had a racquetball instructor. We kept trying to offer the class and they just didn't fill. It's just one of those sports that I think it came and went. Um, so this is a fabulous space, but um, I think it's one of the few sets of racquetball courts in the valley. The only four. 
And the only people that use it are on Saturdays, formally use it. The tennis courts going out, this is looking west from the top of the 400, 600 building. There's eight courts out there. They were resurfaced a couple of years ago. Um, I think, Matt, that was also sort of a public-private. It wasn't there do public donations that help, that help fund because there's, the, the tennis courts get a lot of usage. There's, there, we do offer a couple of classes that maybe average 10 to 14 students. Um, there are some USTA-sponsored events. There's some equal how, chance foundations. What you most often see is um, people out there playing tennis, or it also serves as a, pri as a spot for private tennis lessons. Um, so people will come out there and use our facilities, private tennis lessons. But we do not have tennis. I don't anticipate us having tennis, because we just have not received the, the responses to people wanting to, in, in, to re-add a tennis team, men's or women's. So there's the, there's the folks. There's a, the, You've seen that. The soccer track and field, soccer field and track. OK, so our track is a dirt track that is primarily, primarily used for CJC, CJT training. That's the primary usage. It's a, it's a dirt track. It's not, um, we have no track team. It has been used in the past uh, with Trustee Iverson's assistance for the Relay for Life and various other items. Um, the soccer teams use the soccer field, Napa United, uh, Stormers, if you notice out there, there's uh, rugby goals set up. Anyway, there's lots of use in this area, and with proper care and proper utilization, this, this area could be a, a real community hot spot, um, but it will take some, take some effort to get it to that point. Baseball field, okay, last summer it was the home to the Napa Silverados, and the, the picture on the right, Okay, what happened this winter? We got hit with deluge. I mean, and what happened this winter and two years ago? That happened everywhere. But this situation on the right, because of a, a confluence of and confluence of uh, issues, this happens if we get like one inch of rain or inch and a half over the course of a couple days. If it and, and if once it once the area gets saturated, it it f fills up. And it's a variety of issues that, that nobody here can change without, without some major intervention. Um, the good thing that happened this year with the torrential downpours is that Jerry's been trying to find places for our baseball team to play, but other schools, their fields are saturated too. But this is a situation due to some drainage issues and um, backflow with the flood control that even though it's 75 degrees and sunny out, you can't step here yet. The water may be not visible, but you can't step on it yet. And they, you can't get on it to do anything, okay? But this facility, when it's, when it's in good shape and when it's not inundated, it's a fabulous facility treated appropriately. It's a very nice venue to play baseball. We have lights, but the lights probably are not really functional well enough for, for um, long-term use, but this is a very good facility. And I would go out and ar I would argue that with a little bit of investment, this might be one of the better baseball fields in the area. And when I say in the area, I mean um, Solano, um, uh, Los Medanos, some of our schools that we play. But it just needs a little rehabilitation. So the baseball field usage, our baseball classes, baseball practices and games, Napa Youth Baseball sometimes comes out and uses it, um, depending on who the coach is. Um, they'll have clinics and camps, and, and when I say who the coach is, when Bob Fresky was the coach, he had a very successful summer camp that brought kids out for two weeks, and it was a, fa it was a fun time. The parents could bring them in five days during the summer, and, and it, was a, it was fabulous. Not to say it hasn't happened, but that Bob was a passion of Bob's. Um, youth baseball camps, and of course last year the Silverados were here. The softball field. Um, Softball is used for softball, hence. Um, but uh, again, the, due to the nature and the, the, where this facility lies, drainage is an issue. Um, we don't have softball right now. That's another issue we're trying to work with. But um, Napa Express Youth Softball, Napa Rec Softball has been using it in the past. Justin Siena, yeah, I Justin think, is, is using it. Okay, so it's used. Okay, we just need to, um, we just need to, to spruce things up a bit. And then the pool, the aquatic center, we don't use it very much. It's used by the community, bottom line. We offer, we might, we offer maybe two classes, and we only offer two classes because they just don't fill. We've tried night. We've tried early morning. We've tried noon. We've tried to have open swim.
But Justin and the water polo groups, they come out and use it, and it, it works well. And it, in the, back in the day, it was very nice uh, underneath going into the locker rooms was a nice area where you could you'd go in. So anyway, it's a very nice pool, and I think it's one of the few pools in Northern California that is of Olympic size. So the nuts and bolts of it, okay? The west area of the, of the, of the athletic and physical education facilities, um, there are issues there that, that are due solely to the fact of where those fields lie. There's nothing, I mean, there's the drainage, the rain, with the, the, the way the, the, when the rain comes, the, the flood control will shut off, close a gate, and water has nowhere to go, so it just sort of backs up. Um, and there's nothing we can really do about that. Um, but what we've, Jerry's done, and, and, and with, with help, we're looking at, we'd like to look at potential private public partnerships in, in, in for two, re two things. One, um, with the city and the, the proposal for uh, the complex, the sports complex out with Kennedy and such, that'd be fabulous. And there's been talk about that, okay? But it needs to gain traction. And, and, we, and if we can get become players in that role, in that, that event or that game, we need to get in there. Um, there's some, there's some traction being gained right now with soccer, with soccer mm -hmm. groups, right? Yeah, with the North Bay Sports Complex, uh, directly with Andy Eliopoulos. Uh, you may know Eric Housley here in town. They're part of the, uh, a group that's, that's looking into possibly um, supporting a public-private complex out there. Also, Playbook Management International, which is a uh, Michael Hitchcock flew out from Dallas a few weeks ago. He's the owner at FC 1839, the pro team in town. Um, we've all been speaking, but there's nothing I would bring to you or to Dr. Kraft until I actually see something on paper and a plan that they have. But we have been in constant contact. They love the site. They love the fact, especially with the FC, with the alcohol permit, um, potentially bringing some some youth sports out here on the weekends, potential uh, venue for possible mid-afternoon concerts on the weekend, things like that, but building up that facility to more than one field, but possibly two to three, and also having room for the CJT to do their work out there as well. Um, kind of similar to what we did with the Silverados to an extent, but maybe on a grander scale. So uh, we have been in constant contact, going back and forth, um, and I kind of said you guys need to start put your money where your mouth is eventually and let's get moving on this. So <laughs> that's where we stand on that. Yeah, so, so again, there are, there are significant issues that would, if, to make those viable in all seasons, that area, it, it, it would take a uh, significant uh, uh, undertaking. Um, so that's where the long-term goal and where, where can we go and how do we get there, what do we want to do? Partnerships where we can share facilities with the city, city programs, et cetera. Um, but in the near term, in the immediate future, um, we acknowledge that there's, we, we, we can't do anything about the flooding. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. But you have to deal with it. It's trying to make chicken salad out of stuff. Um, but what we can do is when it's 75 degrees out and it's nice, um, I think uh, I was asked, what is it that you need? Well, I'm not here to ask for money. We're not here to ask for, you know, just we need $2 million and we can make it all work. What we, what we would really like and need is an acknowledgement and a, that, number one, these are areas that are classrooms, okay? Again, it's an age-old argument that has gone on in our discipline for years, okay? It's, there's not a chalkboard, I'm dating myself, um, <laughs> uh, but there's nothing up there. But these are places where instruction occurs. Okay. They're also very highly visible public places. Okay. If you come over the Amola Bridge, okay, if you start looking down, there's green space out there. Okay, so if we can make a commitment um, of some financial resources, but cleaning up that area and making it an attractive site. Because one of the things that does happen is that um, one of the challenges that our coaches is when they try to recruit, they'll come out here and they'll see that it's not very nicely groomed. Or, or they'll see that, well, the, the, you know, we can't get the mower on the, on the, the field because the, the grass is still too wet from the rain 10 days ago. And so then they go on a trip and they'll go to Santa Rosa as a nice, beautiful field and we'll all go to Santa Rosa. We also battle some of the recruiting battles, some of our coaches, is that's, that's 
that is what will lose occasionally a student. We got, a couple years ago, we got priority registration for our student athletes. That was fabulous. That was a wonderful, wonderful process that happened. Um, but this is an area where we have had, and have had people come and say, well, look, you know, and we get negative recruiting from other schools. It's not supposed to happen, but it does. So really what we need is a commitment to, to make those spaces um, um, inviting, okay? Main, maintenance, maintenance, make them places that people want to come. It's wonderful green open space. Um, and if it's managed correctly and set up correctly, we believe that these areas can be used by the community, they can be used by our schools, by the city, things like that. And I don't think we just believe it, we know it, but you, we need to have some traction that can be gained. Um, little things um, like lawnmowers. Okay, uh, having the personnel and the people to do the, to do the work to make these, these facilities um, functional, okay? The other side that is there is the safety issue, okay? When people walk on a soccer field, when it's been, when it's been soggy for weeks, and then three weeks later it's dry and hard, well, what's left? A divot, okay? And you have somebody go out there and you step and boom, okay? That's sort of an athletic director and administrator's nightmare, okay? You can't control everything, but you want to control the things that you can control and can keep them so, so it's a safe environment. Not saying that, that that has happened, that I know of yet. Um, I've, I mean, when I was in Jerry's position, there was an occasion where somebody made that reference, but we tried to mitigate that. Um, but really what we want to do is make this an area that is, that is seen from Emola, that is seen from when you come on campus, that is inviting, that's nice, it's green, okay? So when, when, when a team like the Silverados comes, Boom, it's, it, and it's planned out. And you don't have to walk through, um, you know, we, the, underneath the bleachers there's not weeds. Things like that. So it's a commitment, okay? And I'm not saying we don't have the commitment, but we need more of a commitment. And we're willing, we shouldn't say we're willing. I've been in, I've, I, was at a, I was at an institution that, um, where we had a, a, an administration that was sort of fond of athletics as long as you didn't make anybody look bad. Um, so, so it was just sort of like, okay. And then we received new a rollover in administration and there was an emphasis put on maintaining what you have. Not building new, but getting what you have, making it the best you can make it, and then making people proud within that. Okay? So what the outcropping of that was, there was some, there was some um, cosmetic resurfacing of some facilities in athletics. There was, uh, there was a new, uh, new pond was put in. I happened to have a president who was very fond of ponds. So there was ponds put in. Oh, excuse, excuse me. So, so and it, it, it didn't require lots and lots of money, but it was a commitment. And when that commitment was made by, by all concern, it was like a pride of ownership that stepped in. And it was amazing how quickly and how fast the community got on board and started utilizing what we had and did it in a fashion that we could control because we were, we were in control of it. So, like I said, we could go, I, we, I've been shouting, Gary, I'm, Jerry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, what I'd like to do is, is, if you have questions, I'd like, we'd like to entertain some questions or some ideas that, that we could do because I, I could go on for hours and I won't. I want to thank you two for a really good, solid overview. That's a lot of information and open it up for questions from the board. Go. Yeah, no, I, I want to say thank you uh, to when making this request and putting this together uh, so quickly uh, in a month's time is, is just really nice. And I, I completely understand how this pr presentation could take two hours. Um, <laughs> and similar, I think our questions could probably take two hours as well. So we got to want to be conscious, uh, conscious of that. Um, but I, I mean, I, for me and my family, I, I'm enhancing athletic opportunities is, is absolutely critical. I mean, for, for our student success in our experience it's just been great I mean, I'd, and here specifically at the college I mean I had a short stint on the golf team here um, my uh, uncle 
just also drop a little um, information that uh, he's in the Hall of Fame here for, for, for the football team uh, when he played in the 70s. Um, my uh, 93 year old grandmother takes weightlifting classes and she's you know a continuing student here. Um, I think at Joanne Busenbark's uh, a recommendation. Um, so I, I think in many different levels, I've just had a, a very uh, good experiences with it. And I think for students in general, it provides, and it's not for everybody, right? Um, but for a lot of students, it can really provide significant benefits in the classroom. Um, just maybe if you're not a student, or you're not a student athlete, but you're just practicing for health, uh, physiological, uh, mental health, um, there's just a lot of benefits. So I think it's absolutely critical that, that, that we uh, look to support, and I appreciate uh, the candor as well, um, and telling, you know, what, what, what's, what some potential needs and what we could be looking to as a board, as a college community to uh, better support uh, better support the athletic uh, programs and, uh, and facilities here. It's a long statement. I do have some questions as sure. well, but I, I did want I did want to make that that point. Yeah. Um, and so I mean, like I said, it, you could have uh, millions of questions to ask. I think initially, what got me uh, going and, and started to uh, want to know a little bit more about the athletic programs is you know a lack of our a, a volleyball or not volleyball team. Softball. Excuse me, a women's softball team, and also I believe women's basketball team. Correct. So. Unfortunately, we had a coach, I believe, three years ago. We did have a team and decided midsummer to move basketball. Or move basketball, basketball. Uh, sorry, to, to Contra Costa College. And that kind of left, left us in a lurch. Uh, some of the girls went with them. We didn't have a team. And if anybody knows how it is to rebuild a team after not having one, it's very difficult. We then hired uh, Brian Fonseca, came in that year, built a team. We did have an intercollegiate team the following year. Brian Fonseca almost did the same thing. When had to go back home, his real home was down in Reedley, California. Moved back down there right about midsummer. And again, the girls weren't there. We didn't have a coach at the time. So we then have hired Glenn Mayo, who is the former coach at Yuba College and Folsom Lake College. And he's been out recruiting like a madman. Um, and supposedly we were gonna have numbers to have a competitive team next year. And then Oh yeah, I was, oh. how does, was it in terms of recruiting and, and that process? And, well, and the recruiting is difficult because yeah. um, we really try to focus on Valley kids. So um, the numbers in soccer are tremendous on our soccer program because our Valley is very strong in soccer. We're uh, conference champions the last two years in men's soccer. Uh, Randy's brought the, the women's team basically from just a 10 or 11 kids up to 17 last year. So we're very competitive, we're growing. But when it comes to basketball, um, sometimes volleyball and softball, the numbers of kids in this valley, they're often really um, not, don't wanna play at the competitive level after high school. So they go on to often four year institutions. So that leaves us with a little. So then we still, we have to go out and recruit. We cannot recruit out of the side of the state of California. Everything's predicated inside the state. We have no funding for recruitment for intercollegiate athletics. So our coaches um, kind of do what, what they do. So for instance, Glenn sent out 120 letters to seniors um, in the area, uh, basketball uh, girls at the high school level. I personally, the last few weeks, I took 13 of our local schools and took every senior that plays volleyball, softball, basketball, um, formed a spreadsheet and gave it to each one of those uh, coaches with the, the school they attended, the school address, and their head coach. So a lot of times it's, it's by snail mail, by mailing, it's by social media. We do a pretty good job with social media. They, um, most of our coaches, most, I should say, attend events, high school events. That's where a lot of recruiting occurs and or practices. Um, they try to get a hold of the coaches and, and say, hey, can I come by your practice one day and just tell you what we have to offer. Um, Another thing coaches do, well, they, they'll go to attend travel ball events, whether it be softball or soccer tournaments, and that's a good way to be seen and, and recognized and make contact with folks. So it's high school, but it's also in the off season, some of the travel ball or mm -hmm. play sports. And there is a little bit of a catch-22, like with our soccer coaches, they all work in the club system. So they're kind of burning the midnight oil because like has to, Randy has to supplement her income by coaching soccer, but in hindsight, She's actually coaching some girls that potentially could be coming here in the near future. Um, Rogelio kind of does the same thing. He's working with 1839 in men's soccer. 
Um, I know our baseball team has been active at times with uh, youth baseball in town, so that's, that's helpful. Uh, Bob Fresky works with some of the youth over at the golf course. He's now our men's and women's golf coach, which is a very um, competitive team. We sent two girls to the state last year, and we're in second place of the, the Big A Conference, which is a large conference right now for golf. Um, so they kind of do they kind of do all these things. They get on recruiting mailers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Kids put their name into a database, not like what happened the last few weeks. Yeah, <laughs> not, nothing like that. Um, but. Um, they get these mailers, and then we do have a questionnaire on our nvcstorm.com website that a lot of student athletes will look at, fill out, and then that is submitted directly to the individual coach. And then that way, if, if a person is from out of state, that is first contact. We do the paperwork, and then they can recruit them. And one of the, one of the recent uh, advances that, is, that has helped and will continue to help is the promise, because okay? that fits very nicely into uh, recruiting student athletes because a student athlete in order to compete must be enrolled in at least 12 units per semester so that's that is a scholarship without calling it a scholarship but it, potato potato um, so that's a that's a that's a process that our coaches are starting to, to become more um, familiar with familiar with and involved with but it's an opportunity to get the students here for the first year and basically paid for, and we've actually had a couple volleyball t students, right? Yeah, volleyball. We were able to enact it. Yeah, post they were retroactive on it. So, sure so that's a wonderful tool that, these, that our coaches can use. And for this, the, it seems like the basketball team is a female basketball team is on a better track. What about the softball team? That is a situation we're working on diligently to resolve the situations that's going on with a full-time instructor. Okay. I just have a comment. I just would like to uh, acknowledge everything you've said, and, and I don't, at least personally, I agree with a lot of what you said, I think, on, on different levels. I think, one, you know, safety issues, just people being out there on the field, the maintenance and those things, the aesthetics of it, you know, being that it's a very visible area for the college, I think, um, for me, all of our facilities, I think, should be maintained and kept up, one, to serve the purpose they're intended for, but they should also be aesthetically pleasing. I think that that environment helps and it adds to a uh, student's experience and their well-being. Uh, so on many different levels, uh, I agree with you and I think we should try to find ways to improve all of this. Um, and certainly public-private, you know, uh, partnerships may be a way if we can't afford to, to do it ourselves. And so at least I am committed to, to trying to explore those things at, you know, the board level uh, to um, try to improve this for, for all of the students. And I think it's not just the students who will benefit. I think everybody on campus and the community. So I think there are a lot of... Uh, factors that um, make this uh, something that, that would be great for, for our entire community, not just the, the students who are, are, of course, the priority. Well, obviously, if there was an easy solution, it would have been found already, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing, and I think I touched on it, but, but when these facilities go offline due to nature, <laughs> Jerry, you want to call it, to me and to Jerry, uh, I'll speak for you, Jerry. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's akin to the, the to the computer lab that holds forty students in the in the seventeen sixty seven, going offline. Okay, that's a classroom, and if the IT goes down, okay, or the power goes out, that's offline, and you immediately lose that capacity in that classroom. Okay, so when these things happen, the soccer teams, when nature hits, the soccer teams. They lose their classroom. So what? What are they? What do we do? Okay. So there's analogies that can be drawn quickly, and the, the, there's some big ones that there's. I mean, we can't control what we can't control, but we can try to mitigate some things and help make things better. So, um, appreciate the time. Is there anything else? Yeah. We'll just go down the line, Trustee. Yeah. I, I I just have a comment. First of all, I want to thank you for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, and for acknowledging that your fields and facilities are classrooms. It's amazing how many people don't think of them like that and kind of disregard it as, oh, it's just playing. With the state of our health uh, in America today, it's amazing to me 
that physical education has not become the necessary class on a broader spectrum. Uh, when our own you know, uh, school district here waives two out of the four required years um, for high school, it's very frustrating. Uh, because I know, personally, if my students don't walk in healthy, how are they going to learn? It, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So I really appreciate you coming and kind of shedding light on this and asking, not for the moon, not for something that is, you know, Pac Bell Park or something, but just a facility that you can use and continue to use and is presented in such a way that will encourage people who may not be athletes but who may want just a really safe, nice place to get physically fit or maybe get healthier. So I really appreciate you coming, and um, I look forward to maybe doing some work on the board for you. Thank you. To be redundant, thank you very much. It was a wonder <laughs> wonderful, wonderful presentation. And um, uh, I like how you spoke about private um, partnerships. Um, you know, we hope that our we had hoped or we hope that, that uh, the relationship with the Silverados keeps growing and that they're not deterred because of, you know, what the baseball field is like, looks like, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get it to high standards. And so, um, yes, uh, willing to work with you on, on finding partners. Trustee Kwaja? I think everyone said what I wanted to say. Just <laughs> kudos, you know. Thank you. Trustee Baldini. I have stories. <laughs> 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 but um you know, I took a I took a a dance class in the spinning room mm -hmm. with the tap dance class going on next door. Right. It was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I, I appreciate the whole the the need for um, the field maintenance and everything and particularly the aesthetics but I, I'd also like to see some focus on the interior spaces yeah, definitely I guess that leaves me I have tried to narrow it down to three but so I I understand the flooding is has it ever been evaluated on a deeper level on what we could do with drainage or assistance from flood control or the city? I can't answer that. Question. I don't know <laughs> if Matt was looks at that. Um, Good evening. I will try attempt to answer that. Yes, over time it's been looked at a lot of different ways. We brought people in to give us some ideas on what we could do on the scope of what we can change in that area and it runs to millions of dollars because ultimately what's going to have to happen is is that entire area is going to have to be lifted up significantly. And that's one of the reasons why I think overall some type of partnership with the city and with other groups to utilize some of the Kennedy Park space because that is much higher. I think that's ultimately what will happen. Uh, uh, or is the best way to go to get the biggest bang for our buck. There, we're really limited with what we can do with gravity. And I will say that this last year with the flood control project, this was one of the first times where we saw it in, in full action, if you will, and it actually performed the way that it was supposed to do for the community of Napa, and it actually, some of that water did flow onto the college property to keep it within the bounds of what it was supposed to do. But again, what we saw it did function the way it was supposed to. Unfortunately, we're dealing with the aftermath and just waiting now for a very slow flow off the college. That was a pretty good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Next, so what is needed or what could the board do to help right now? I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you mentioned lawnmowers. Is there like... That's, I mean, so that's, yeah, I mean... Yeah. I was just looking. That's just for been something. one thing I know that's been brought to <laughs> my I, attention. I, I believe I'm and I, and, step and, I, and I think Matt. I mean, the lawnmower lawnmower breaks and it needs a part, but we don't have redundancies, right? There's no redundancies, um, things like that. So, so it's a commitment, and it's and it might be also perhaps we just need more, couple more people personnel to 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 for maintenance 
across campus. It doesn't have to only be there. Um, just things like that is what we can do in the short term to help facilitate the process. Because what, again, the torrential rains we had, California's out of the drought, Napa Valley College is inundated, okay? So, uh, but, but for the short term, things like that, um, that will work, go campus-wide, not just in our corner of the world, campus-wide. And make no mistake, we have some very fabulous facilities. The 400 building is wonderful. The, the, the upper stairs of the gym is fabulous. Downstairs, a little more worn, could, could use a facelift here and there. So, but in the short term, that's what it is. The long term is, is the, the grand plan, the vision to look out, and that's where that public partner private comes into play, I think. Because make no mistake, where those, where those are, as Matt just said, it, it's, uh, it's, right. all, well, it's like New Orleans is below sea level, right? So you expect they have huge pumps to move stuff out. So. And then this is probably redundant, so I won't even make it as a question, but more of a comment. So there's a clear advantage of greater community access and use, not only from the community, but students if that area was in Correct. better shape. Right. Oh, yeah. As we all know, anybody, especially that has children, there's nowhere there for them in this community to go out and play. The NBUSD's fields are filled. Um, I get it constantly, Coach, when can we come out and use your facilities? When can we use your facilities? It's just a beautiful place, and I think if it was, like Bob said, spruced up and kind of more inviting and, and have the ability to have more people utilize, especially the outdoor facilities. I mean, you saw the utilization of the gymnasium and the other facilities. One thing we forget to mention, like when the soccer field is flooded, the soccer team moves to the gymnasium. So it's kind of a snowball effect. So um, I see a lot of outside use for our community uh, being able to come out here. Another, another partnership that has been sort of a tough nut to crack is with Napa Unified. And when I say that, so a couple years ago, we had in the middle of October, we had a huge deluge. And, and the, the soccer field was unusable for a week. Um, we tried to go to Napa Unified to try to use the, where the Raiders practice beyond the Marriott. Okay, and so went back and forth, and, and Matt, had, had, Matt had a contact there. We could use it at 5 o'clock. Well, what happens for a soccer game at 5 o'clock? What happens at about 5, 30, 6 o'clock in October? Okay, wonderful. But they wouldn't let us use it until everybody on, on Redwood School was out, and there would be no chance for children around. So it's... You know, you, you, you work for solutions like, oh, that door closes, and you go over here, oh, okay. So, I mean, it's constantly, you know, moving. And, I mean, there's no, and again, I'll say it, there's no panacea. I mean, but we'd like to try to work toward short term and then where we want to go. So, again, thank you. And then is it safe to take the temp with you guys? This is an area that we would like to look at a little bit closer in the future. It's not even, uh, last June, the five-year capital outlay construction plan is not in the top 10. 11 has modernized the lower level of the gym. And the board has been uh, criticized in the past for whoever comes to the, the podium gets what they, they want. So, <laughs> but you look at, uh, <laughs> you, you look at, um, you know, the, the five-year capital outlay construction plan, and it's not, it's not there. And that's what we're kind of prioritizing, at least last year. So you, you look at that. Also from the, the level, I know there's been some talk about dredging Napa River, and that's what Kennedy Park was raised on, was dredging spoil. So why couldn't we look at some sort of... Uh, opportunity there if it goes ahead or even as to encourage it hey we we might be a dumping ground but uh it's actually a good actually thing when you think side. of us <laughs> using our fields as the savior of the community mm -hmm. maybe there's a little assistance out there i would um just convey to board. thank you very much gentlemen this is a great presentation i think you really covered it we also f for the board we're working through our unit plans for budgeting and and certainly equipment is one of those things that's in, that's in that budget that those plans don't generally include staffing but we have another process for that as well so um, I'm sure that some of those things will find their way into your 
unit thank plans. You. Well, yeah. thank you. 35 more than 20, but less than two hours. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> thank you. Trustee Evers. Sure. Well, just, we have a multitude of information out there, um, as we heard, I guess, about proposals that have been considered in terms of why the drainage doesn't work. I mean, I think I tried to find that information. I've, I've seen records of it. The fields flood on a year, annual basis. Those records or information is out there just generally, but mm -hmm. not in terms of like civil engineering. Has been there been any actual like civil engineering done? Any hydrologic, uh, hydrologic work uh, surveys done on that? Because if it has, I think we should make that information available to these, you know, these interested people that um, are interested interested in investing in the campus and partnering with the campus. I think that speeds up their analysis, um, makes them understand what they're in for, and potentially maybe it's not valuable, so then we could just move along. Um, and similarly, I think with uh, Trustee Baker's comments, it seems not only just a lot of opportunities outside with the, the fields, but inside. I mean, we saw locker rooms that are under you. We just have too much space, too much space for showers. And if we're not using it for uh, athletic programs, then what is the best space of those use? Uh, what is the best use of those spaces? Um, so just food for thought. Excellent. And uh, I, I can work with um, Matt and um, Bob Parker to, to, I think it's a great suggestion, maybe to create a you know, one pager about you know what are the issues what's been done at least for a, a more clear understanding yeah just trans yeah. just to put it all on the table mm -hmm. all right so moving on to reports we're going to start with academic senate report miss amanda Badget. Badget. good evening board um, I'd like to begin by saying that I wasn't with he, you in February because I was at the annual meeting of the College Art Association, which is the professional organization of my discipline, both art historians and artists, and um, it was in New York. And, um, and thanks to the college, and I was able to receive professional development funds to attend this meeting. And um, while I attended this organization's meeting as a graduate student um, uh, now many years ago. Um, it was really wonderful to be back. Um, many of the panels were the same, rather could be rather esoteric about the nature of art and objects and the objectivity of art and stuff like that. But the other really gratifying opportunity was the panels on teaching. And sure enough, those panels were just chocked full of community college professors like myself. And so there, instead of kind of waxing poetic about the nature of art, we got to talk about assignments to students that really get them engaged with talking about the history of art. Um, we got to talking about um, partnering with local art museums. We got to talking about open education resources, which are online resources that professors can assign instead of textbooks, which are a far more economical option for many students. In any case, it was a great opportunity. I want to thank the college for that. Um, <clears throat> I. Now back to uh, this campus, um, I am a member currently of the Leading from the Middle group. It's a cross-functional group here on campus of faculty and deans. And next Friday, we are sponsoring for our faculty coordinators and deans um, a retreat at the Upper Valley campus. And at this retreat, we are um, going to be having a conversation uh, around guided pathways, which um, is the term for the sort of large scale rethinking of how community colleges meet student needs. And so um, I'm looking forward to it. You will no doubt hear much more about guided pathways before it's all done. Um, as for the Academic Senate, it's March. It's a little busy. <laughs> We got a few weeks yet till spring break. Um, but the Senate continues to work on the vetting, the revising of board policies and academic procedures. Uh, we're looking at some of our own processes and we are looking to open elections for the leadership positions in April. So you will certainly hear more about that soon. Thanks. Thank you, Amanda. 
uh, 8.2 Administrative Confidential Senate Report. Mr. Robert Harris. Thank you, Trustee Everson. Oh, I wanted to add. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, the Administrative Senate um, continues to uh, move forward, work with the constituencies uh, on campus to advance uh, projects and initiatives. Um, we will be as well uh, advancing uh, elections for new uh, for officers uh, beginning in April, and then uh, working for the selection of the administrative confidential uh, of, um, of the year, uh, moving to so there'll be a presentation in May. So we're just working on those items. Um, uh, on the side, uh, as the administrative senate president uh, last month, I somehow I got myself involved in the Napa Valley Marathon, not as a participant, but as a, uh, a volunteer, and sent out a call to our Napa Valley folks across campus to help assist, and, and, and our group was responsible for uh, delivering all of the materials at the aid stations that the runners would come through and utilize, be it water and everything, and, and all the materials with that. And then at the end of the day, we went back and picked everything up in the garbage. But so when the, I put out the call to our folks, uh, it was myself, Lissa Gibbs, uh, and, and two, her two daughters who begrudgingly came and assisted, but gained valuable experience and had fun. And then from HR, Isabel Mostafanjad and Danielle Savage assisted. And then I'm also a member of Napa Sunrise Rotary, and I had two uh, two of our Sunrisers uh, answered my call when a couple of our Napa folks got sick. So the day started. At 5 a.m., it ended at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we had a blast. Um, it was hard work, but it was very rewarding. So it was very, very nice to have uh, some of my colleagues in the administrative senate step up and, and assist. So it was a wonderful day. And we also had two of our folks uh, run the marathon. Uh, Hector Sanchez in, in HR, he thought he was signing up for the 5K and somehow got into the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, our new administrative assistant in health occupations uh, came, and uh, she's uh, young and full of energy and signed up and ran the marathon in four hours and 27 minutes. Um, so it was, it, was, it was fun. So, But it was, I was very pleasing to have some of my colleagues in the Senate step up and help volunteer on that day. That concludes my report. Thank you. All right. 8.3 Associated Students in Napa Valley College Report, Rafael Monzo. Hello, everyone. Uh, at this time, things have progressed enough that I can and really must uh, report some major developments in the associated students. Uh, this is a status report, but I'll need to lay out a bit of context first, um, a bit of a timeline. So we started our term in, uh, on June 1st of last year. Uh, the elections, however, did not provide a secretary for our board, uh, as someone who specifically records our minutes for our meetings. Uh, there was no student who ran for that position in the elections. Uh, as a result, our board members took turns doing that work each meeting, even when they didn't want to, <laughs> because they felt that they don't type fast enough or they, you know, don't quite uh, pick up all the nuances that you know, happen in a meeting, right? Things that happen in discussion, et cetera. So they, even when they didn't feel very confident, they volunteered to, uh, to, to take the minutes, to record them, yeah? Um, and the work of revising those minutes after the meetings fell on to me, the board chair. Um, and this proved to be extra work for all of us. Uh, none of us were elected to be the secretary. The senators, the directors, the officers, we had our own roles to perform, and I certainly wasn't trained how to be a secretary either. I'm the president. It's my responsibility to facilitate the success of the team as a whole in all of our endeavors, and that's a lot of work. It manifests a lot of different ways. Um, we serve on committees. I, I serve on committees. I serve on hiring committees. Um, but then we're also hosting events. We're supporting other people's events on campus. We're collaborating. There's so much work that we have to do. And so none of us really had the capacity to take on this extra role. Not a single one of us, including me. It was a lot of work. <clears throat> um, having to revise the minutes by myself, it just it proved to be too much um, as, as the president, and um, understandably so. And so the minutes started to pile up more and more. And before we knew it, it was December. 
So one of our members came up with an idea. Um, it was our director of finances, Pablo Leon, who may or may not still be here. He was in the room earlier. Anyways, I uh, was going to give him a shout out. Um, he came up with this great idea. He said, uh, he, he proposed that we create an ad hoc committee, a simple ad hoc committee to split up the work. And it certainly did, it, it served to be the right solution because from January to February, they got the work done. They revised all of the minutes, sort of picking up on the work that I'd already done and um, endorsed them forward. Right, So I, I was very proud um, that the board as a whole, because we, we had a vote to do that, of course, to create the ad hoc, I mean, they actively found a way to solve a very serious problem that we were having. I was so proud um, because our minutes are our official record of what we discuss and what actions we're taking. Um, so I was so proud of, of their resolve and their commitment. Um, all we have to do now is approve those minutes. But we can't. Out of the blue, we were told that our board cannot have any more meetings for the rest of the year. That means all the way through May. That's still yet to come. Um, because uh, we've apparently lost our quorum. We've had members uh, resign. And I've, I've mentioned that as the months go on, um, our membership has fluctuated. Um, and we've lost too many members to uh, stay within quorum. So we can't have meetings anymore. So now we can't approve the minutes anymore. And that's terrible. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate um, after all the work that we've done. So um, basically, uh, I have an idea. And that is, um, in the spirit of item 14.1 tonight, it's kind of giving me the idea, what if the board approves them? I mean, they're ready to go. The students have vetted them, revised them carefully in their ad hoc committee. What if at the next board meeting, the board, I mean, includes them on their um, board docs, right, on your agenda, so the public has full access to them and everything, and you approve them? Uh, you know, I think that that could possibly be a solution. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I, I wonder what your thoughts are on them, but I know we can't really exchange dialogue right now. I'm just putting that out there. Um, I want to report to you, now that, now that we've kind of come to this point, that things are a little more concrete, I feel like I can report to you on what the actual status of this situation is. Um, and uh, 14 point, it kind of lays out a good context for 14.1 uh, as well, because without a quorum, we can't have minutes, uh, sorry, meetings. And without meetings, we can't make any more decisions. Yeah, can we, yeah. like, just for the sake, because 14.1, we're going to cover some of this, right? Um, not necessarily, really. I mean, um, it's it's rather d uh, different than the minutes. I mean, re that that situation. Okay. Um, but like I said, it it does sort of provide good context for that item. But it's we won't be talking about minutes in fourteen point one. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's basically uh, where I conclude this report. Is that I am, you know, I I've told you what the situation is and sort of where we are now. And uh, what I recommend, um, I think that at the end of the meeting, uh, I spoke to Josefa, of course, our student trustee, and um, maybe he'll recommend it during the future agenda items section. Um, maybe the, that the board could consider um, approving all of our minutes. That would be really fabulous, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. 8-4, uh, I don't see Jan Chard. I believe she's retiring or retired already, if that's been approved. but. Congratulations to her. And we'll jump to 8.5. I do see Martin Shoemaker, classified Senate report. Sorry about being late. Oh, no. You're good. You're here now. Oh, I can speak up. They won't hear you, Marty. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we're getting ready for the classified retreat during the spring break. We're working with Charo, try to get some speakers. And... Uh, yeah, I, I do think because, you know, uh, I do go make the rounds with the fire extinguishers and I have been getting some feedback from the classified, you know, and they've noticed changes in the gym area. Uh, I think what the, wasn't said, was, I, I might have missed it, but the mosquito abatement people have really kind of opened up that north side. So when you go down the frontage road, you can actually see how pretty it is. And, and I think uh, I don't want to lose any traction now that we got our foothold to kind of open that up a little bit. So, yeah, the, the guys at the gym, yeah, if we could give them a little support, you know, I'm for it. And, and I think uh, 
everyone, you know, um, some of the, my constituents, you know, they take the time during the lunch break and they walk that and they, they, they didn't know how pretty it was. So I think, you know, the push forward, I think that's fabulous idea, you know, so. And, and if you guys want to check it out, I can get one of the golf carts and we can go take a putt, you know. Mm. So that's all I got to say. But, you know, I do, appre I, I think the, the school is moving forward. I'm really kind of digging it. And, and, and yeah, we're, it's a renaissance era. So uh, that's all I want to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, eight six faculty association report. Christy Romoto. Hi. Um, unlike the Senate, unfortunately, we aren't having elections this year. Uh, we're on an <laughs> off election year, so I'll be here again next year. And, <laughs> and uh, we had a meeting today that went very well. We had a very high attendance at our meeting. Negotiations are ongoing. And uh, that's all for my report. Thank you. Uh, eight seven, Dr. Kraft. Thank you, um, Marty. I want to comment on that, and also invite the board to kind of pencil it in. Um, April twelfth is the classified luncheon, and if you can, if you can make that, um, it's our honor to kind of host and and uh, celebrate the classified at that at that day. And um, so, I see them working avidly on their on their cell phones. So that's good. Excellent. Um, a couple other things. I, I do have, and I can submit this little piece. I want to talk just quickly, hit some highlights and some pieces here. Um, first, the Scion Student and Campus Housing um, draft feasibility study is um, in its final preparation for future release. Um, it's, they're working on the second draft of the survey, and, and that final version will come my way to review um, uh, what to expect from that when it's going out and the um, and the process. I'll, I'll cover all that in an email to the entire staff so everybody knows and include the board certainly in that so you know what's going on. Also, as we get nearer, um, hold at least host a, a couple forums on this um, for students during the day and try to make as much as possible. I'd like to come to ASNBC, Ralph, and um, see why I can present some of that information as well. Um, Visioning for NBC. Um, in the uh, month of August of last year, I kind of issued a challenge to the to the campus to said you know, we have a strong mission statement, um, we have values, but we really have not um, established a vision um, that's concrete for the college, and you know, and and people take shots at it, you know, in good ways. Um, Marty said we're, you know, we're in the renaissance. I've heard that before. We're innovative, we're creative, we're moving forward. But to try to put some parameters around that to um, define some of the items that we're trying to look at. Inclusivity is a core central value of the college. Inclusivity includes the community and, uh, and all the things we just talked about in terms of bringing the community here on campus, um, being available for it, um, addressing the student needs, and and um, and we've done some of those things. So um, we're moving forward here. I'm, I initially had wanted to see whether we could bring in a vision statement by the end of this spring. It's just it, too too much going on for us to, to to do this. We've concluded several rounds of of inquiry. Um, the cabinet has met on this. The student leaders have met on this. Um, um, the set through the um, president's uh, council of presidents. I'm sorry. Each area has already met and at the high level and discussed this and kind of generated some mega themes, um, if you will. Um, the next steps for us to now gather those up. We'll start be working on those over in the spring and the summer, and I hope to finish this in the early fall. So we should be able to move into the fall um, in the future with a strong vision. I can only tell you that you know, from a CEO side, from president side, this is one of the key factors that holds the college back from a accomplishing its its uh, its mission. It is the clarity around what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we fit into the community. So I'm very excited about that. 
Um, the DCMP, really quickly, District and Campus Master Plan is still um, processing its way. We did a couple um, presentations for you along the way here. We're still gathering information. Um, this is that comprehensive look. One of the things that you asked for, Trustee Dodd, is part of the DCMP, which is gathering all that survey data on every possible area, um, cross-referencing. There's so many maps and charts and pictures and pieces of information that are literally all over campus that we're pulling together. Um, in that is the utilization study. One of the first things that we decided to do once we, in, we looked at our internal documents was to go outside to an organization that would look at all of our spaces, including the ones we talked about tonight, um, analyze them, um, talk about how, what's the best and highest usage. I heard some of that conversation tonight as well. Um, th that's a long study. We expect, however, to, we've closed the RFP, and we expect that um, we'll be reviewing um, groups that have put forward or answered that RFP. And, and that will be coming to you, I hope, in, in April. It's possible that it could be May, but I'm hoping April. It will take two or three months for the work. This is the kind of work that can be done um, over the summer um, as, as well as the late spring. Usually we try to avoid some of the things that you know, faculty might be just in the thick of. The utilization study is really more about a facilities review um, and certainly you know, through scheduling and the, and the um, academic office and instruction office, which is the best now, instruction, academic, both sides, huh? Um, we'll be covering that. And then um, finally, uh, you, you know, just as an update, and, and Eric organized a high school and college math and English summit here, along with the math and English faculty. I was able to go to a bit of that. Um, kudos to our faculty again, for kind of stepping up and addressing how we're supposed to interface with, with the high schools. And um, w it was a seamless piece. It was, it was actually a joy for me to be in the room and watch our uh, both faculties interact. There were superintendents there, and there were also um, leadership and administrators from both sides. So um, Thank you, Eric, for, for doing that, and, and um, there'll be a lot more coming that, uh, on that in the, in the future. With that, I think, I, I wanted to keep it brief, because Bob ate all the time up. Um, <laughs> so we will move along. That's, that's all of my report. Oh, no, I'm sorry. ED. Um, the foundation is doing good work, the Napa Valley College Foundation. Um, and I, I just wanted to share their annual appeal, um, which is generally an annual appeal for just giving, end of year giving, netted about $70,000, um, which is good for us as par. Um, the Wine Education Center capital campaign, which the, which the board endorsed uh, about a year and a half ago um, at open session to said move forward, is uh, progressing quite nicely. We're still in the soft cycle of that capital campaign, but I could share with you that we are in the um, what appears to be m multiple millions of dollars of pledges already. So I think um, that kickoff started uh, with uh, Michael reaching out to the Trefethen family, and um, we went up there and met with them, and that kind of started the ball rolling, and, and other people are kind of rolling in. Um, much more will be coming back to you on that in the next uh, coming weeks. Again, a great, fabulous uh, public-private um, partnership that allows us to kind of move forward. That's all I have. All right. Moving to topic nine, approval minutes. This is 9.1 minutes of the February 13th regular meeting proposed. Any changes? Mm -hmm. Minutes are uh, approved. Item 10, consent calendar. Any Move for approval. Uh, Second. Can I make a comment, please? Oh. What, if we have a motion on the floor. Sure. Uh, who seconded? I'm sorry. I had a, so Trustee Baldini made the motion. Trustee Segura made the second. Thank you. This is very much a new trustee comment, so I'll totally confess to that. 
Um, but something as a, a, a new trustee, and maybe I've been speaking with a couple other, actually a couple of neighbors who've now interested in what I'm doing now, have gone to the website and looked and trying to see what's going on at the college and seeing what we're doing here at the board level. Um, looking at certain agenda items, they can't really tell what's going in without going into the document. Um, and even if they go to the document, it's a legal document, a memorandum of understanding, uh, some sort of other uh, binding contract, which are written um, by lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would be very helpful, I think, uh, to provide little backgrounds and summaries, not extensive. I really don't want to add it, really any sort of administrative burden for, for, um, for staff by any means. But I thought a perfect example um, was what uh, Rene Rubio did for this uh, Mesa um, MOU agreement. It's really nice background and summary. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, Dr. Craft, you mentioned mm -hmm. you know, clarity. When we're talking about vision is really, we want to be clear of what we're doing here uh, at the community, uh, at the college level to the community. Um, so I think this is providing a little more extensive one two, three paragraphs, depending on the subject, it would be, I think, really, really helpful. And then another new trustee comment, acronyms. If you're gonna use an acronym, define it the first time. Um, and so and, and I, if you look at Renee, it's literally, I think, was just like a perfect example of what he did um, for that. But then, um, you know, the other uh, items, obviously we read them, I understand what they're about, mm -hmm. um, but for the average lay person, it'd be very, very helpful to provide that information. He's part of Vice President DeHaro's crack team, so I would expect it to be wonderful coming from your side, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is an excellent example. And um, we can encourage that. I think, I think everybody would find that, and that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we can get you a cheat sheet, both of you guys, for the acronym. I'm still waiting for it. Because there are a lot of them, and it takes some time to get them down. All right, so I have a motion. Catherine, you got the motion in the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, do we not use our electric system anymore? We're, no. No, we're it's dead. expediting it's it a little bit, so we're not. I, Plus, Kyle forgot his computer, so we're just saying. We <laughs> haven't used it yet. So, okay, so the motion passes unanimously. All right. Consent calendar. All right. Academic affairs, <clears throat> information discussion, action items 11.1. .1. Curriculum changes, spring 2019. This is a action item. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Trustee Baldini made the motion. Trustee Baker seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries unanimous. Moving to item 12, nothing. Item 13, nothing. 14, this is 14.1. Associated Students of Napa Valley College ASNVC elections. Um, I'll do public comment first. I do have the a speaker. Way, uh, Raphael, I would ask, maybe it's going to be better for you to, to, uh, to follow up on this one with your comments, or however you would like to do that. Would uh, you like to lead before the, the, before the presentation? Or? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know. I, do you <laughs> I, would you, so you recommend that I speak after? No, no, no. Either way is just a fine. Point. But where yeah. would I if if I went after? Where would I? When would I speak? I don't um, before board action, uh -huh. but but after my comments. Sure. <coughs> um, I I'll go after you then. Okay, that's very gentlemanly of you. Sure, I like that. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> right. um, a couple things. Uh, th this comes to the board and Raphael and. Um, and the board um, ran into a difficulty, which was a technical legal issue, <clears throat> which was moving along um, the Constitution, the, the ASNBC Constitution defines elected membership. Um, and there's also a quorum associated with that membership. Everything's moving along quite nicely. Raphael addressed the minutes, which is another issue. Um, but um, in the process, <coughs> Of, of school and life and classes, two members of ASNBC um, officially resigned. And I don't know what those members are or their, or their, or their um, titles. Leaving the ASNBC board without a quorum. So the problem with that is they couldn't move forward. They were kind of stuck between two elevators, if you will. And there was nothing for them to do. They can't, they could not move forward to, as he said, approve the minutes themselves because they didn't have a quorum to do that. Um, where I started to become more concerned was the ASNBC board would not have the quorum to move elections forward. 
And um, we wanted to, I talked with Raphael, I talked with the ASNBC members who were you know, gracious and wonderful and really worked very hard on this. And Hussein, I'm sorry, you're up here. So um, as a member of that board. Um, and, and Ben Casada, who also kind of led the charge. Um, we came to the conclusion that we needed to do a couple things. One, ensure that the elections move forward in a, in a timely way. Um, and also include this year online voting so we wouldn't have just a few students available here on campus at a polling place, but we could open it up to make it much more inclusive, meet, um, to be frank, ADA and other kind of you know, areas where all of our campuses would be covered through the online piece. Our goal that this year is to move from a, a maybe a couple hundred votes to several hundred votes, which would be wonderful. We have 5,000 students or so somewhere in there, Oscar, eh? Um, uh, yeah. 5,235. Oh, very good. 5,235 or close. Um, and um, we would expect it would be nice um, if we could get 5% of that group, all right? But 10% would be exceptional. I think once people get used to doing this, and I'm curious about this crew right now. I'm curious about our student base. If they, if they get a survey, it's easy, it's mobile friendly which is what we're planning to do. We just may get hundreds of students voting. It brought, and that's one thing I'm bringing to you tonight is, is to, um, and there's a formal action I'm requesting, is to allow the district to step in to ensure that um, elections can move forward. And that, that's pretty, pretty painless. The second piece here is a little more complicated. The Constitution as it exists right now um, defines a large group of folks, and one of the technicalities and the problems with the Constitution, um, it defines all of the senators in, in there and the board officers in there, and so we ended up with a huge number of, of electeds, which over the past few years we just simply have not filled. So uh, the, the question became, do we run the elections with the existing Constitution, with all of these positions, and end up with not a quorum again, or do we work on the Constitution? I reached out to ASNBC. Um, they already had a committee started, but and were in the process, but they fell below quorum, so they couldn't really do anything with it. So we, we've worked, I think, group, you know, we put in at least 20 hours on this over the past two weeks um, in some, some deep workshops. My office for at least 10 of those hours um, I think you all worked in ASNBC together. You know, there was a lot of back and forth. We had legal uh, all along the way, you know, advising us. Um, and the result, I, I think, is a, a really nice piece of work that defines what our current leaders have envisioned. Um, the positions have been narrowed in scope, so we don't have so many to fill. So our quorum, I think, moving, in the, moving forward, the, the quorum can be met. And, and there's also a piece, a couple things we've added in there. Um, one is to, and you'll see this maybe in section 7C, um, which allows the superintendent to step in with at least two ASMVC officers to appoint members should they fall below a quorum again, which would get us out of this fix. It's a little, it's a little backdoor catch but only if they fall below quorum, because it, it can happen at, at this kind of institution. And so I'm, I, it, it's kind of an elegant solution. I, I think that will work forward. Um, the other pieces, and, and I'm sure Ben wants to make some comments as well, but, or, and Raphael certainly. Um, I think that, I'm, and, and I've addressed this with the ASNBC, one of the issues in and around attracting people to anything is the value equation associated with that thing. So there are many different proposals about how you could make ASNBC more attractive. We do some things, you guys have to help me right now, but um, we, we do some value package for them, so to speak. Parking places, what else, guys? Uh, what, I'm sorry? Uh, stoles. Graduation stoles. Graduation stoles. Okay. Seats at the front row grad. Okay, and I, I would say those are good things. However, stipends, credit, priority registration, those things would add even more value. Um, and as we talked about, 
part of the utilization study is also looking at uh, more adequate, to be honest, more adequate space, a nicer space for the ASMBC. You know, because right now they're in a, I think an area that was intended, well, maybe it was always intended, I don't know, I, I'll just stay away from that, but it, it's, they've outgrown it, and they will outgrow it. So I think that a learning environment and um, engagement is, is critically important. So we'll be coming to you in a little bit um, with the action, and I can talk that through, but that's the, that's the intro piece. So I think I have the language on the recommended. Yeah, I think, Raphael, you, you need to, and what would you like to do? I just, I wanted to just address me stopping you in your presentation because I knew that we were going to unpack some of this too in this section, so my apologies on that. Oh, yeah. you mean during my um, board report? Yes. Or my board report, my report. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I again, my story led up to that point uh, about the quorum. And so, again, I, I mean, but it, it was relevant to what I was speaking of before that we could, you know, we can't approve them because we can't have meetings to take votes because we don't have a quorum, you know, just like you couldn't meet if you didn't have a quorum. So um, that's where sort of that report ended. Um, and I know it really sort of like rel started to relate to this item. Um, and, and set up some context. So, um, but now I, I've, I've submitted a card to speak on this item, though. Um, so, in regards to this item, yes, um, it's it's the same thing in that uh, we we would like to uh, support, you know, this uh, new draft of the constitution. Um, and I just want to provide that insight that we. Um, you know, it, it really was collaborative. Um, I'm as surprised as you are. Um, I really am. I was surprised at how Dr. Kraft chose to handle this particular situation. Um, he continued to surprise me, actually, um, because he very well could have slapped down a new constitution and said, this is what it's going to be, and I'm going to ask the board to approve it and put it on the ballot and not really take our insight, but that's not what happened. He invited us to his office and we actually went sentence by sentence and he asked us for our input on everything and 90% of our input made it into the document. So I know I personally feel really confident about this new constitution. Um, just know that it came with some sacrifices. I mean, I left a part of my heart in that office over there. Um, I, there's some things that they wanted, uh, Dr. Kraft and um, administration, that they wanted that I did not. Um, I had to let go of a lot of things that I desperately wanted in the new constitution. Um, I had to let them go. I had to compromise, um, and I think they did too in a few places. So in the end, I thought it was a very uh, collaborative effort. I was very surprised. Um, and uh, just, you know, and, and thankful. I was very grateful um, that you chose to, like, include so much of our input. 90% of the things that we recommended, you accepted, Dr. Kraft, into the document. So we still feel a sense of, like, we were a part of crafting our own, um, our, our, our updated draft, our updated constitution. Um, so that is why I feel uh, that I want to support it. Um, I hope that the board will authorize uh, that constitution, that draft of the constitution to go onto the ballot and that you uh, authorize Dr. Kraft to uh, conduct those elections. Um, we have a very short window of time to get you a new student trustee, right? Or the, the next student trustee. So um, I just want to provide that input of how surprised I was and how grateful I was that it was a very collaborative effort. We were a part of it completely. Um, we provided our insights, had to make a lot of compromises along the way. But uh, this document, it's really going to fix a lot of the problems that we're having right now. So I do support it. The last thing I want to say, though, is um, I think that move to approve is not going to cut it for this item tonight. It's just not specific enough, um, the way that it has been posted, et cetera. So I, I think that tonight's motion, to do what we're doing here tonight, what you'll be doing here tonight is very specific. It's not your run-of-the-mill action. You don't grant powers like these every day uh, to the president, superintendent. So um, I recommend that out of respect, you let the student trustee make the motion tonight because he's very ready to do it. I think um, it's, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen tonight is very specific. Um, and if he, quote, does it wrong, uh, then, you know, help help guide it along then um, or, you know, 
strike it down and make the proper motion. But I, I really think that he's prepared to do this tonight. Um, and I think that uh, to honor the fact that we really did collaborate together, the students and President Kraft, um, I think that you should let Huseyfa take this because he's got it for sure. Um, it's very important that this draft of the Constitution on board docs up there, uh, the one before you, is the one that gets put on the ballot because it's the one we worked on together, not some other draft. Does that make sense? This draft. So um, that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Raphael. And I just wanted to point out that I do have Husefa here as a recommendation for making the motion. But I do want to give opportunity to uh, Ben Casada to speak before we uh, call on the action. Thank you. My name is Benjamin Casada. I'm the coordinator of student life. I oversee the ASNVC. Uh, I, first off, I want to thank Dr. Kraft for taking the time on Monday. We were out there till 11 p.m. working on this. I also want to thank Oscar DeHaro uh, for being at, in attendance with that meeting as well. I definitely want to thank the ASNVC officers. We have two here today as well. And of course, the ASNVC president, Rafael Manzo. Um, for taking the time to not only on Monday night stay till 11 o'clock to work on this, but also on Tuesday night till about 8.30, 9 o'clock, reviewing all the changes and adding any more changes that need to be done. Um, when they were uh, finalized with the uh, Constitution, they sent it straight out through email um, out to Dr. Kraft uh, for him to do final review. Uh, I had a chance to take a look at it myself. Um, I've given some suggestions uh, with the ASNVC and also with Dr. Kraft and was uh, lucky to have seen some of it uh, instituted in the Constitution as well. Um, so in that, in that mind, um, I would like to let the uh, board know myself that I do endorse uh, the, uh, the uh, new revision for the Constitution and endorse the, the needed uh, actions taken to also get the elections up and running. I believe that's critical that we just continue doing that in some form or fashion. Um, so with that, I just want to be quick because I know you guys have a lot on your, on your plate. Um, but other than that, um, I do, uh, uh, the fight's not over. We still have a bylaws we need to go through um, and to uh, fix that as well. So that will be a continuing uh, uh, effort uh, in regards to ASNVC and uh, the institution to get everything uh, set and ready to go. Um, ben, thank you. I, I agree with you and and um, Raphael, and and I think it's important for the board because this doesn't happen very often. And um, I, I think maybe you could introduce the other two members, and if you you guys would like to speak, we're, we're we'd certainly love to hear from you. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce the two. Uh, if you want to raise your hands, want to call your name is uh, Christopher Sotelo, and he is our senator or our uh, director of legislative. Affairs, and he actually deals with the state of California uh, student-led uh, resolutions and uh, policies and procedures. And of course, is Hildeberto Venegas, and he is our senator of social sciences. And he helps out at our office whenever he's doing his homework. So uh, we're a little short-staffed in our office, so he helps us out as whenever he can. So he's he's been a big help as well. Either you like to address, or you or are you good? You're comfortable. No, You're why? Fine. Okay. Come on. All righty then. Something? Nothing? Oh, Chris, I you have something. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've been told by Jeff on Napa Broadcast we have now, we're up to like six listeners. So there's a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people out there waiting for this. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Oh, Hi, yeah. <laughs> Hi uh, my name is Christopher Hernandez Otello. Um, this is my first year being on the board. Uh, this is my first term. I found out about ASMVC through actually a previous member. He was one of my classes. Uh, I mean, I didn't even know what it was about, but it, I, I was immediately drawn to it as soon as I joined. And um, I mean, I want to say that this, this constitution and the new one, you know, was a team effort for everybody. And I mean, I just hope you guys approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to, uh, well, the board wants to thank all of you guys for all the time, energy, and sacrifices that you guys made and put into this. Um, with that being said, the motion that is being sought here, and I'm just going to read it here. Leave it to him. I'm going to leave it to, well, do you Should have the language? The well, 
Yeah, I have the language. Okay. Yeah. So, the floor is yours, Husefa. Yeah, before I think I make the motion, I just want to make a few comments. I think most of the things, uh, uh, the ACE and VC board members and Raphael and Dr. Kraft have already stated. Uh, and I just want to reassure the board that the voice of students in the governing body of the college remains. Uh, the students are still heard in the process of uh, uh, any process of the college. Uh, and, and I think it was necessary uh, that, that the college proceeds with um, the, the collaborative efforts of students. And I think Dr. Kraft, you and your staff did a wonderful job <clears throat> Thank you. Excuse me to uh, help us uh, gel all of this together and uh, come up with a constitution that that's uh, I would say a legacy effort for the coming uh, 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 coming ASNVC members because this was you know a tug of war since you know the last ASNVC boards so I think we did a pretty good darn job I would say <laughs> in making a new constitution and. Uh, putting it up for voting and hope that the student body goes for this one because mm -hmm. it's a lot of sweat and tears in this one. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I, I, I'll just go for the motion. Right? Uh, so I move that the board authorize the president superintendent of Napa Valley College to conduct the spring 2019 elections for the associated students and that the board approved the draft of the amended ASNVC constitution that was provided at this meeting. So, do I have a second? second? The second. motion was made by Trustee Husefa and seconded by Trustee Baker. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The vote passes unanimously. Congratulations, Congratulations you guys. Congratulations to the Good student work. body. Yes. Thank you, you guys. All right, big piece of business taken care of, and again, it, it is very important. So moving on to item 15, general information. This is an action item, 15.1, California AB 30 and SB 291. Who is, did we do that? This is your ledge. Oh, wait, no. <coughs> I have it as an action item, though. Um, that's fine. <coughs> you recommend it, yeah, I think. Well, that's, I'm going to let you unpack it, or do you want to just call the question? Uh, I'll just make a couple brief comments. Um, we had the legislative meeting a week ago today, and it was the first one we've had in a while, the first one with our new group. And we had a really great meeting. I'm just going to kind of steal some of my board report here. Um, the, really kind of talked about what um, what the goals of the committee are and then uh, what our processes are going to be like and really kind of clarified those. Uh, we're working really closely with our new PIO, Ms. Holly. And so uh, what we reviewed uh, some things that were brought to us by uh, Dr. Kraft and by Holly. And uh, we recommend, are recommending to the board that we as a board support these two items. And then to do that, what the um, process would be is that we would basically direct Dr. Kraft to move forward on determining what's the best way to do that. And then that might be a letter from uh, that he would write on our behalf and sign our, our behalf or, you know, depending on what other opportunities are available in certain circumstances, there may be some other options. For instance, I got an email just a couple days ago about SB 291. Did my microphone just stop? I think you have to speak right into it. It okay. sounds like it's <laughs> so. And I um, so um, SB two ninety one. We got an email about they're going to be doing um, a, a kind of a big campaign to push on this one. This is the one about the uh, community colleges financial aid program, and the true cost call it, true cost of college. I think is what it's called. And uh, on February, not February, March 27th, Wednesday, March 27th, they're trying to, they said, pack the room, basically, and they specifically asked for students. So um, 
I don't know if Christopher, since he's interested in legislative things, and maybe Yusefa, if it's something that you guys wanted to do a road trip to Sacramento. <laughs> but there's also um, a really, really simple, easy on their website where you can just basically put your name and, and your zip code and hit send, and it fills in the blank and sends it to the right person. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> so maybe we can get that shared out as well. So that's our recommendation from our committee is that the board approve the support of the full board to these two items. So moved. Do I, I have a motion made by Trustee Segura. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Trustee Baldini. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Trustee Baker. And we're moving on to 15.2. This is our triple CT board election, which I have our ballot right here. We do have a candidate that's listed on this ballot. Trustee Baldini, do you have any? Number votes? three, that's my lucky number. Yes. <laughs> do you have a speech? <laughs> Where's where the lawn sign? Uh, this time I'm <laughs> saving it for the press release, Rafa Dr. Raphael. <laughs> I would like to speak to this issue, if if, uh, if I can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it, it's been my pleasure to be um, this my the end of my seventh year. I'm starting my eighth year last year, um, next year. Sorry. And um, uh, I've watched Michael in action o over these many years that we've been together. And this is your which year now coming up? Do you know? Even know? Twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Many, many years on the board, right? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, 17 years on the board, having, and I've shared this with you before, having been a former board member, w the strength of a senior member um, on brings a, a foundation that's very difficult to find. And um, I think that you've added at, the, at times um, the kind of status quo that we needed, sometimes the calmness that we needed, other times the champion of things that we needed. And um, I never found you shy on any of those things. So I think you would be outstanding um, at the state level. Um, this, this state board is um, instrumental in moving the, the needle, really, for all trustees. And you've seen this at the CCLC. Um, much of that is directed. So one voice here it makes a huge difference. So. Um, thank you, Michael, for throwing your hat in the ring. I just wanted you to know how much I admire you. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. And then just, I did have a, a couple questions from Trustee Goff on this. Do, are you, just on the whole process, do, like, do you have any other, no, how I'm it good. works, how many, just the whole? No, I think I'm good. You okay. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. So we vote for no more than seven by checking the boxes. Do we have to vote for that many, or can we just vote and, yeah, can we? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you have a recommended slate? I, do, I have a slate right here, nominated candidates. Do I need to go through each one? Um, I don't think you'll need to do that. No. Okay. So sounds like why well, I don't want to call, call the question for – Nominating and voting for Trustee Baldini. Just real quick, are we voting for seven people or just Michael? Looks like we have to vote. Um, for part of this now. is plurality. So, if you vote for other people, then it will actually reduce right. your trustees' exactly. options. I was right? going to suggest that if we have to, that we pick some people that are not popular. Right. So you're so you're, <laughs> so you're stronger. You're stronger just to cast the vote for your. I, trustee. I don't think we have to vote for any of them that's correct so, so the i would motion. move that we vote for michael is there a second second we have a motion by trustee rios and a second by trustee goff to vote for trustee baldini all those in favor aye aye, aye. motion carries unanimous Sweet. congratulations Thank you very best much. of luck Board. Okay. i'll fill that out in a minute okay okay Moving on to item 16, this is board policy review and adoption, 16.1. You skipped one. Oh, I'm sorry. I was mm -hmm. looking at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 15.3, superintendent, president, out of state, travel for a conference. This was 
your uh, Virginia trip, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is an action item. Do I have a motion? So move. I second. Trustee Kawaja has made the motion, seconded by Trustee Segura. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to go to 16. 16.1 project update. This is an information item. This is. Uh, do you want yeah, to then I'll call. I'll call on Catherine Kittle, who's also the the, um, the executive coordinator, but also is the project manager for this really important item. I have to find my mouse here. So I'm just going to open it for you and just sort of explain what you're seeing. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to see the actual lines. Yeah, yeah. seriously. So the, the key uh, takeaway from this, I realize the writing is small, but what, you're, what the key takeaway is all that green you see is a lot of the hard work that we've done all year. Um, if you look through, go down a little bit, you see all of the yellow. That's the hard work of all the committees um, and senates on campus who are working very hard to try to get you those before the end of this semester, before students and faculty leave campus. Um, the bits in gray, and you'll see more and more of it as you go down, the bits in gray are the uh, policies and procedures that we um, plan. I'm going to direct the vice presidents to reprioritize uh, for next year, and then we'll begin work on the gray items for next year and see how far we can get through the list. So that's, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a quick visual overview of where we are and where we hope to be at the end of this year and what we're looking at next year. Catherine also um, reminded me that you know, one of the standards that we were looking at was the ACCJC standard to make sure that we address the policies as we're working forward. So one of the recommendations on their last visit uh, basically said, hey, you need to spend more attention and more time reviewing your policies. And we've done a very journeyman-like job. I mean, so we are really moving along. Kudos to the students and the faculty who have worked these. I'm, I've watched some of the super seamless activity in the Senate um, on these, and um, it's hard because there's, there's a lot of feedback. People care a lot about what we do and how we do it, so it's important to recognize this whole shared governance process it is working like it should, but it takes a long time. So our goal is to see whether we can bring these all home by the end of next year. It will probably take another year to finish them all, it would be nice to think maybe by the fall semester, but I think that's going to be... I don't think so. No, no hope. <laughs> no, okay. the goal All is right. to get them done, and then what happens, we begin on begin a regular review cycle that we hope to stay on it. It, yes. it goes every four years in a, in a rolling... The fun never stops. Yeah, the, the fun, fun never, never stops. stops. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Any questions or discussion on this item from you guys? Included in this are the first reads, yeah. All right, okay. okay. So jumping to 16.2, these are first readings on policies just like we were looking at, but BP 2510, 5200, BP 2210, BP 5510. So this is an information item. I'm sure you guys all looked at them. Do we have... You don't need anything. Do we need anything? Just Questions? Comments? Maybe the time for you to direct staff, me to you know unpack them, or if if you're fine, then not hearing anything, or or send questions as you as you may between now and next time. Okay. Pretty guess, short and straightforward to me. Yeah, I was gonna throw out because in the past there have been specific BPs that caught a little bit of attention, and we've set up committees in the past, and I just was looking for your guys's um, feelings on whether or not. You know, instead of forming committees, if that does come up, if we could just take care of that in the ledge committee. So I just wanted to throw that out, it's something to chew on if it does come up. So I don't blindside you by recommending that. So, all right, 16.3, second reading, BP policies, 3505, 3520, 3540. Um, do we want, we have them open. Uh, this is an action item and is a second reading. 
Do I have a motion? So move. I have a motion by Trustee Kawaja. Do I have a second? Second. I have a tr second by Trustee Baker. I Any do have a question though, just about the way this the this appears in board docs, the notes and things. It just oh, yeah. it felt really crowded. I was wondering what the mm -hmm. was that on purpose because it felt kind of weird. <laughs> and, and and it was like the 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 reference to like blue ink and red ink and everything. It was like I, w I went into the document expecting to find all three, and then I didn't. So I wasn't sure if that was just a. That's that's my fault. I should have okay. taken out the sentence about the blue ink. Okay. That those are just like <laughs> minor typos that. Uh, okay. <laughs> that I just fixed. So I'm sorry. I'll I'll correct that. And I should uh, get around to calling board docs to ask how to separate them and get the lines to show up and make the font a little bigger. It's, <laughs> it's you have to be an HTML expert to, to make this work better. Oh, I really do appreciate the, uh, the extra information and working with me over uh, the past couple of weeks, Catherine, on just getting the information I was asking for about background on each policy. She was, she's been wonderful. Thank you. Any other questions, comments on them? Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We got the first and the second, right, Catherine? We did. Okay. Uh, moving to sec 17, this is board reports. 17.1, standing committee and other appointment reports. So let's go with district auxiliary services. We did have a meeting. Uh, it was kind of an overview for me because I have not been in that meeting yet been a part of that so it's a just for future rosara you know about it it's a binder about this thick to unpack uh, a lot of good things a lot of great discussion and i look forward to filling you guys in as we move forward with it there's nothing specific to report out on i can re recollect no a, a typical meeting is a, a review of financials um the status of our independent units the, the, how's the bookstore doing? How's the cafe doing? How um, updates on um, vending um, RFPs? Some of the the, the um, I'm going to call them P3s, but don't think land and development, but the P3s um, in terms of like the Silverado's contract, um, the NAP broadcast contract is in there. There are other pieces in there that we just kind of review each time, and um, it's. It's doing very well. I would commend the college and the district, and maybe left-handed for me, um, in, in setting this up several years ago, we we're really in the vanguard, and um, everybody's scrambling throughout the whole state because of their, their chasing income. So they're looking for reasonable and strong ways to do this, and, and our, this kind of foundation is exactly what that is set up to do, so we can bifurcate entrepreneurial activities from academic activities. And mixing them sometimes can be difficult. Thank you, Dr. Kraft. Uh, all right, next is VWT, Board of Directors, Trustee Segura. We also that? met, and I kind of had the same experience as you did with Oz. It was my first meeting, um, and it sounds like it's ever-growing, and so we're trying to I gather that finances and keep it, keeping the right records is also, um, you know, let's get it very well organized before it gets bigger, so. It sounds like there's gonna be support from uh, Trefethin too there. All right. A whole bunch of folks, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Good things happening over there. Thank you, Rosara. Legislative Affairs Committee, you had that report in our general board report with the action item. Trustee Baker is the chair on that one. So thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? I don't want to take your wind on that one. All right. Audit and Finance Committee. That's uh, Baker, Segura, and Trustee Kawaja. It's a quarter, quarterly meeting, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Real Property Management Con Committee. We have not met, but um, I have had contact with uh, representatives of both the Wine Train and the North Bay uh, Sports Facility Group. Um, both of them, I expect, will be calling uh, in the next two, two weeks or so. Um, the Wine Train has 
a plan or an, a, a kind of fleshed out the idea of what they, they are hoping uh, we might be able to collaborate with them on. Um, I spoke to Greg Braun, suggested some additional things uh, for presentation to the committee. And so he thought he'd have that in the next, ready in the next two, two and a half weeks. And hopefully we'll set a meeting before uh, our next meeting, our next board meeting. Mm -hmm. Same with the uh, North Bay Sports Group, uh, Andy Eliopoulos. Um, they're, they weren't quite ready for a presentation. They, they, they haven't figured out kind of what the scope of this project is. However, they expect to, that that will be defined in the next couple of weeks because they expect to receive their feasibility study, or at least the first phase, uh, I think next week. And so he thought he could actually then know what the scope of the project is, what they're looking for, and be able to present something to the committee. That's all. Awesome. Thank you, Trustee Rios. Next is McPherson Distinguished and Teaching Award. That's Trustee Goff. It's coming up, though. You keep saying it's coming, but I well, heard it. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> Vice President Shearer will reach out to you within a week and um, start that process. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's a really neat, neat thing, too. So, all right, those are our committee reports. Uh, next is 17.2. This is future agenda item request. And we went through that last time. Do we need to pull it up? Does anyone, uh, do you guys want to look at it? Is there any, anything you guys are wanting to see, add? Um, I think I have one thing. I think Raphael already mentioned it a bit. Maybe having... Um, the minutes, so because the district, I, I guess, has authority over ASNBC, because um, so the public might be able to see our uh, individual what we did as a board. Uh, would that be possible? I'll have to. It's a good legal question. <clears throat> you know, it, the the district has the authority. The board can exercise authority through me um, to do that. It's a it's an interesting question. Is so what I will do is let me research it with legal first and then deal with Pat Wilson, who's been legal the whole way here, and see what he recommends. If, if it is... As a it personal sounds, opinion, I don't think we can... I feel yeah, weird it sounds very it, yeah. odd to me because... It, it, yeah. Well, and you're not the voice no. of, the, of, of, the, of the students. However, um, my, my intuition on this was once the new board is elected is to go back and review those as a board, ASNBC board, and then approve them and move them forward. Is and it possible to have them, because if the concern is just that the public or the student body doesn't have access to mm -hmm. things that have been discussed at recent meetings, is it possible to put them up as proposed as somewhere? Drafts. As drafts, yeah. I would say. I, um, our problem is their transactional minutes, mm -hmm. and so it's just, verbatim discussion and I'm and I, I think it's a bad precedent for us to be thinking about so let me I'm, I'm hearing the request and let me honor it to say that I'll do my best to figure out and and talk, I'll talk with the chair if it makes any sense at all right. okay thank you you're welcome thank uh, you on the, uh, the AS uh, and we just staying on that topic what I mentioned about how the board can better support uh, student by me it's now more evident than ever that uh, we really need to step up and see what we can do dr. Kraft you mentioned some ideas kind of that mm -hmm. uh, would encourage new membership and new student leaders uh, to step up to the plate I think long term it will really be benefit them individually and the college as a whole so um, I don't know it sounds it looks like we're still in process and we're talking about developing new bylaws. I just want to see how we can be most helpful because I think it's really imperative that we, that we help out now. Why don't I bring this, I'll, I can bring a report back. S some of this, uh, we have to reach out to faculty um, and or the instruction if we're going to start offering, a, there, we'll probably use an existing credit course, but um, it gets a little sticky you know, for us to figure out how to do that without, because we, we don't want to really talk about it too much, but, but we'll, sure. we'll meet and work on that. I think it's, I think it'd be great to hear that next section. You know? But there's non-academic, I, I would imagine, some non-academic things that we can I can make consider. those happen, just Thanks. me, you know, yeah. so they probably will. 
Good. All right. 17.3 trustee and board chair reports. Let's go this way to the proud new papa, Trustee Dodd. That's, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, Harold Dodd was born uh, February 26, eight pounds, three ounces. And mm. He's very happy and healthy. Mom is happy and healthy and appreciate all the notes of, uh, of support and love. And yeah, we're, we're very, very, very happy and trying to get our sleep where we can. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Good laugh. Look at him. <laughs> Congratulations again, uh, Trustee Rios. Yeah, I mean, you can't follow that. <laughs> what do you do? Um, <laughs> I, I look forward to the mariachi event uh, this weekend. I think that will be exciting, but other than that, I have nothing further. I took two Puente member young Latina students to the Women in Power conference. Um, they were very inspired, and so we're planning something, at, which is which is great. So, oh, and um, Dr. Rossetti, the. Um, she was one of the speakers, and, and they got to talk to her, and she's also very interested in, in organizing something, so, so we'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Me. Trustee Kwaja. Sure, long list. <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulations, uh, Trustee Dodd. I don't know if he's listening. <laughs> he's. <laughs> Um, well, um, NVC Leadership Academy is continuing, rolling the wheel along. Uh, then there was a continual meeting with Dr. Kraft regarding all this constitution and uh, uh, regarding ASNVC. Uh, then on Friday, March 1st, I met with Catherine and Ben regarding APs, revisions of APs and BPs that affect student uh, and student life. Then on uh, Saturday, March 2nd, I went to Ron Downs Memorial he was um, he was a volunteer at Napa Valley College, as a um, you you could say as a helper in tennis, in tennis classes, and so he served plenty of years uh, at the college. So I, I went to his uh, memorial. Uh, it, it was uh, in the gym. So uh, then um, then again we had again the meetings. Then on March 7th, we had our legislative committee meeting. I think we already discussed all that. Uh, March 11th was a hearing that happened in this room after I don't know how many, four years. It was uh, first in long years. Uh, then, um, then March 12th, we discussed as ASNVC the revised constitution uh, that is going to be put up for elections. And... Uh, I think that's it. Excited for Viva Mariachi Festival. That's so. Thank you. I get to experience it two times. I'm really excited. St. Helena and Saturday. So I'm really looking forward to it. Trustee Baldini. Thank you, my fellow trustees, for your support. And um, I, I don't want to be the one that's known to cry wolf, but the... Uh, Board of Trustees meeting calendar, is that, uh, has that been approved or is that? We have an errata, sorry, we have an errata correction. It should be 713, and so if that's what you're looking at. Yes. Yeah, it was, I think, the 11th by mistake, and um, it, it was a typo. Uh, I see it as errata, but I was going to mention it, so for our calendaring, you should, you should um, please take a look at July 13. I very hope good. it doesn't inconvenience anybody too much, too badly. But thanks very much. Everyone looking at their calendars. It's our special meeting, our board of trustees self evaluation. Is that a Saturday? It, it's a special meeting. It is. You sneered when you said that. I'm not sure. <laughs> <Did> what, <I? laughs> yeah. It must be this cold. Yes, it is. Yeah. It it's must, just the cold. cold. Just the cold. It is. So we're, we're um, typically we've done that. It does not have to be. Um, but and we have time to kind of change that as well. But see what your schedules hold. Is, It'd be half day. Is that in lieu of the eleventh or in no. addition to? Because the eleventh is not on here. No, the eleventh was a mistake, right? Oh wait, um, Michael, I, I see what you're Whoa. going. This may be a double error on on our part. So the eleventh is which day? It's a Thursday. That's the regular Thursday. 
So I think what we did when we talked about it today, we mistook the 13th and the 11th. So the 11th is the day of the meeting. I'm sorry. And then, got it. Okay. And then the 13th was the special. Um, what, what time? We just move the, the other one to Friday and have a sleepover. Yeah, we, <laughs> we could. <clears throat> we could also. It's, it is, since we're on this item, I mean, the 11th is the regular board meeting. We could. Um, this probably gets worse for you. We could, we could probably uh, do the board self eval, you know, before, you know, is you know, like, kind of like we did for training. Uh, a two hour block is is completely adequate for the self eval. Um, so we could do that from four to six, that kind of thing, and see whether we can combine it and then go into a regular meeting. So think about that. Catherine will, will uh, improve and correct all of this. Thank you, Michael, for bringing it up. So plan on the 11th. I'm so sorry. And the 13th okay. so we're is, a, the is a maybe. And if you guys would like to change that to the 11th, just let us know. Or you can take a straw now if you'd like. Do you guys want to just try and hammer it out now? <coughs> Does it work? You can still get out by eight, even if you yeah. talk about it. Right? <laughs> I kind of like rolling it beginning, do a four to six. I, I thought that worked really well last time. Mm -hmm. But that's me. Um, I'm open to doing that. Rather than the Saturday, right? <clears throat> Rather than the Saturday. Is that better? The, Got or it. should I? Okay. <laughs> Any other you out of time input? I feel like there's consensus to do it all in one day, two hours earlier. Any, like, yeah, it's concise. Well, it, it, this is a series, it's a process, so you will have received things before, and, and you would be able to participate online and with evaluations to the, to the board, and in that two-hour session, you kind of hammer out some things, right? But um, most of the work that you would have done would have happened in the first part of July, where everyone can kind of do that online. And, uh, okay. and that meeting itself is a kind of a culminating activity. We, we, we see the results. Everybody's kind of... You'll probably be... It, you, um, you probably will... The board chair will be working on the results to okay. kind of lead them down. We'll work on the process with the, with the chair of the Can I make a comment slash recommendation about it? Um, one of the things that was nice about doing it up in St. Helena is that we all got to sit around a table where we could see each other's faces really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming this has to be done in an open session. Mm -hmm. So is there another space besides this one where we could do it that is open? We've done it in the yes. community room mm -hmm. in the past mm -hmm. too, right? I, sure. I would, I would like that because it's, it, you know, I get a crick in my neck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can absolutely do it in the community room, I think, and or other spaces that might work yeah sure okay all right just for the record i'll be out of town on the 11th oh well oh yeah there you yeah convenient. now he tells why us. didn't you speak up sooner yeah. <laughs> all right fair enough uh did you do your board report no, I don't have anything to report on other, oh, sorry. I can't hear you, sorry. We also um, wanted the, the special closed session for CEO evaluation to take place on June. Is the 13th a Thursday? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just checking to make sure. I think that's how I got So it. that would be the same drill it would probably be, I don't know, um, at least in some of our discussions, we had talked about a longer, a longer period. But, you know, at this late date, maybe, maybe four to six sounds good. Um, um, or we could do, I think, again, a, a good concentrated two hours um, on CEO eval is good. And um, it's, I, I mean, my biggest thing is this is your guys' first evaluation right. for you two. So... It works the same way. Um, lots of pre-board activities, and the culminating piece is the is the eval. This is a closed session, so instead of being the open session, that the other one is. Um, so it would be a four to s actually it could be a two and a half hours if we want to do it, because it will take place of most of that closed session. So, 
So you guys are we okay? Chew on it, or is yeah, everybody that's good? That's fine. Yeah, you're right, Garfield, because you had <laughs> talked about a, a longer one, and then, so I want to honor that. But yeah, probably. Okay, yeah. we'll work on that. Thank you, Catherine. We'll 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 make it work. Uh, I don't really have anything to report on other than my regrets on not getting to make it to the Mariachi Festival. I had my board fundraiser for Mentis, and I can't get out of that one. Please do. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and thank you, Oscar, for doing that, and Dr. Kraft for being a part of that, too, as well. So continuance to closed session, anyone? I, there was a little bit of pressure, I must admit, on getting us out of here at 7.30 from two trustees I won't identify, but I'm sorry. I'm going to adjourn us. Oh, future dates. Our next meeting is April 11th, 2019. That'll be our regular meeting here in the boardroom. I'm going to close at 8 o'clock. Thanks, you guys. Here's the day. Do you need that? I do. Who signs that? Yeah.